Let's talk about how to handle the inquiries that I spoke about in the previous video. For straight to the point type inquiries, the inquiry may look like this. Please note in this video, the first point is always going to be how the inquiry will look like. It will be an example. For this type of an inquiry, start defining modules immediately. However, also find out what solutions the client values the most, as you should work on those first. Remember to always tell the client that you will deliver the, deliver the modules and get paid for the modules. So, if you are working on a corrector controller for $100, you should get paid $100 after that corrector controller is complete. We will now look at the clients that provide a document. Simply refuse to read the document if it is more than five pages long and if you think it is not structured correctly. This is because if it isn't structured correctly, you will not be able to define modules. And you are a game developer slash game programmer. Your job is to deliver or create programming solutions. It isn't to try to understand a game design document that isn't structured correctly. If the document is structured correctly, use that to define modules but also ask what solutions the client wants first. You can also tell the client that the document isn't structured correctly and it is long. So one way to still work with clients that give a document that isn't structured well is to ask them to direct the game. That way, they will define the modules and you will not have to do this yourself. The clients that ask you whether you are available. You should immediately ask the client about the scope of work. This will help you determine whether they are spammers or not. If the scope of work seems like a copy-paste message, ignore it and say that you are currently occupied. This is because the client may have sent the same scope of work to other sellers or service providers. And there's also a chance that the client might be an outsourcing company. They might also want your proposal template. So be careful. You can also ask the client for concept art. If they do have concept art, then they are most likely serious. You can also ask the client to define the modules. The clients that run a company. Ask them immediately whether they are willing to work with you using milestones and modules. And if the scope is extremely large, only Try to get hired for a small portion of the project. So, for example, if the client wishes to make a Call of Duty game, just get hired for scripting the guns. You also want to make sure that the these type of clients agree to work with you using milestones is because these types of clients may not pay you at the end of the project if they don't like your work. The clients that ask about you. This example is very general. Please note that clients can ask about you a number of different ways. Always have a link ready, preferably to a video that will showcase all of your previous work. Try to understand why they want to know about your experience. 
try to find out what solutions they require. You can also show them some sympathy if their previous developer let them down. Urgent work type inquiries. So this is again sometimes the the inquiry can be larger, sometimes the inquiry can be very small, sometimes it can contain a link to a reference game, sometimes they have a document. However, urgent work clients they are good as they can pay you very well. If they require a game done quickly, you must define modules. Why do I say this? I say this because if you define a module, you can also put a price on that module and you can get paid for completing that module. Also make sure that they agree to work with you using milestones so they cannot just reject your game after you've worked on that game for two days. You should also have a clear idea about what they will prove. The client said require a team. Immediately ask for the scope of work. You should also find out whether they will direct the game or not. So if they will direct the game, then you should agree to work with them. You must make sure that they will manage the team themselves. Also talk about the budget as soon as possible. The clients that request free samples, please note that they can be scammers. You should have a video a reference video which showcases some of your code. So in the video you should talk about the code that you've written and how it works. Ask them why a test is necessary. Try to find out the reason behind it. This is this is all of this is so you can avoid giving the test. Suggest talking about the problems and the solutions. Try your best to avoid the test by actually providing any other proof that may convince them. If it seems to be a copy-paste message, reject them immediately as the client might be looking for free samples. Programmers they can be difficult to work with, so immediately ask them about the rules that you have to follow when you will work for them. Ask them about their best practices and ask them clearly about what they will approve. You should also ask them why do they need a coder if they can code themselves. Try to find out why they they actually want to hire you and then work according to that. You can also ask about the budget as programmers might not pay well designers. They may or may not have game development experience. However, most of them are very passionate about the game that they want to develop. So make sure that the first module is the UI and screens. Talk about the UI and screens. You can get you can you can charge a lot for just doing the UI and screens with the designer. And designers also prefer working on the UI and screens first. Also ask them to only give the graphics required to complete the module that you're working on. Explain the process of game development if they don't know it. For students and learners, simply refuse to work with students if you're working on Fiverr because they don't allow it. Clearly, ask the student what they will approve. You should also take complete charge of the project and operate like an expert. The client said ask a lot of questions. Ask them for a document so that you can help them better. So if they're asking questions, just ask them whether they have a document. They usually don't have a document, but if they 
do have a document, you'll be able to talk about the document instead. And if they don't have a document, then ask them to make a document so you can help them better understand what they're looking for. Also ask them whether they're working for someone, because if they are, you should not work with them as they might not be the final decision makers. If the message seems to be copy pasted, then ask them if they are also talking to other people. And if they are, they should put you last on the list. This is a trick that I'll talk about later. The clients that are just looking for codes, ask them to put you last on the list. Again, this is a trick that I'll talk about later. Also, you should instead talk about what you believe you should work on first to get the client or develop the game that the client requires. The clients that are just looking for ideas usually do not pay for for the idea. So just give them a general idea of what uh, people are working on these days and give your price for that kind of a game. You can also suggest them to hire a marketer or an ASO expert instead of working for them immediately. The clients that are only interested in revenue, tell them that you're not a, you do not look after the business side of things. So just talk to them as an expert programmer and an expert game developer. However, tell them clearly that you are not uh, looking at the business side of things. Uh, also, you can tell them to hire a marketer or a research expert. Give them a price per month instead of a price based on modules. The clients that belong to the education sector. Immediately ask them whether they have assets or not, as the games that are made for children require a lot of art assets. So make sure that they have all the art assets before you even talk to them about the game. Again, define modules with the client. Code a price only for that module and only agree to work on that module before working on the next. You should also ask the client whether they know about game development in general. The clients and underestimate the cost. Immediately tell the client why they are underestimating the cost and how much will the actual game cost and ignore their ignore their budget. Only agree to work with the client if they're ready to define the modules.